buying an external GPU dock for my ROG Ally and my Legion Go has got to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. And I truly mean that when I say it. Take a look at the performance numbers with my RTX card. Ultra graphics, 1440p, 4K, RTX on, and this is just USB-C 4.0. There is an Oculink slot for even better performance. I'll do things like unplugging the GPU mid-game and seeing what happens. And I'm just gonna show you the reality of having this set up. All you do is you come home, you plug it in just like this, but you have to make sure you turn on the eGPU dock first before you plug it in. And then give it a second and boom, you have an RTX 4070 connected to your Ally or your Legion Go. And any graphics card works too. That's the cool part. So if you have some laying around, you can buy some super cheap secondhand. And you have that amazing performance ready for you. You forget you're playing on a handheld at this point. All right, so let's walk you through the setup, right? What do you need to get this all up and running? How much does it cost? What is the reality? Are there a lot of problems that happen with this situation? Let me just show you what it's like. First and foremost, the eGPU dock. There's other eGPUs out there, like you have the 1X Mini eGPU. GPD has their own, and they've got AMD cards inside of them that aren't all too powerful. This is obviously a different setup. And I'll tell you why I chose to go this route as opposed to the other route, and that's just because with this setup that I have, this dock, I can throw whatever GPU I want to throw on top of this thing. This is the AOSTAR AGO. Two, and I did a lot of research before deciding which one to get and I'll show you why I chose this one number one is it comes pre-installed with a 400 watt power supply it's encased in this nice enclosure and I love this because if you look at the other ones on the market I mean you can get your own custom power supply but you have to load it on the back of the eGPU which power supplies aren't that pretty I like having it hidden in a nice box and then of course you've got the USB-C 4.0 in the front as well as an Oculink so you've got the best of both worlds um, I'll get to the Oculink thing in a minute but USB 4.0 is what we're going to use for the Ally X and the Legion Go but then as you can see here I mean this dock just looks so pretty like you've got the little knob on the side which is such a cool little little feature it looks clean again and it holds in the GPU very tight. I mean, look at this, it's not moving around, right? So it is freaking cool. There are definitely other eGPU docks out there that are far cheaper than this one. This one costs about 250 bucks um, because I got the USB-C and Oculink. If you do just the Oculink, it's gonna be like 200 bucks. But again, if I look at the one other ones, I just don't like how they look when they're fully decked out and built up. Okay, so now let's talk about the the graphics card. So there's two choices you can make. You can go with an AMD card or an RTX card. I went with the RTX 4070. And I'll tell you why. I was very conflicted on which one I should get, 7700 XT or 4070. And this is what I came to learn. If I decided to save a little bit of money and buy the AMD card, I would run into driver issues. And what I mean by that is, the Ally X and the Legion Go, they both have AMD APUs, right? Z1 Extremes. And so if I have an AMD graphics card, it will, and I have to download those drivers for the graphics card, they will conflict with each other. And so you actually have to roll back your handheld drivers to a whole different thing in order to get your GPU to work. To me, that sounds like a hassle that ruins with the flow of things. You can see OKS's video, he actually talks about how to fix this issue and how, you know so he's better at it than i am you go to him and i didn't want to deal with that so i decided to spend the bigger bullet and buy the 4070 at best buy down the street for me it was 500 bucks and i didn't want to spend that it was not within my budget but i did it anyways i guess welcome to the world of obsession and lack of discipline but i did it and i do not regret going with the rtx card it has been so simple to set up. There have been no issues whatsoever with this card in particular. Like I mentioned, this only has a 400 watt power supply inside of it. So you can't exceed that. I have seen videos like ETA Prime. He uh, he put like a 4090 in there. Um, some other guys have done so. And they haven't 
at least recorded any problems happening. But I decided to play it safe and get the 4070. The last requirement that you need in order to have a very cool eGPU setup is this is a docking station. So there's a lot of them out there. I own quite a few of them. I decided I've always been pretty loyal to this one right here. The JSOX H107. I don't know how you say it, but I mean, it does the job. You can see it hanging here. It doesn't look too pretty, but mouse and keyboard are connected to it. My audio comes from it. Um, I have a display port connected on the back that goes to the monitor. And so all I have is just one USB-C cord that plugs into my handheld or my MacBook Pro. And then it just displays everything perfectly, you know? I have no problems with it. It charges my devices just fine as well. So you get the, the eGPU dock, you get the graphics card, you set it up for the first time. For me, I was expecting a gnarly, you know, freaking me just searching Reddit, how to do this, why is this not working, why is this that? But the reality is it was so simple to set up. And understand I'm not the best with building PCs. I've only done a couple in my life. You know, I'm no ATA Prime or OCAS Gamer. But I got it set up flawlessly with no tutorial. There was one problem and that was when I first plugged in the Ally X, um, it wasn't recognizing the RTX, right? So what I did is I did some basic research and I found on Reddit and I'll link it below. I'm a terminal command that you just run. Once you run it, it connects seamlessly. And ever since I ran that terminal command, I've had no problems. Let me show you what it's like to game on this setup. First and foremost, when you plug this in and you start gaming, you forget that you're on a handheld. You can treat this like you would any other desktop gaming PC. I'm playing games phenomenally. I'll go ahead and show some benchmarks at the end. But again, I'm at 1440p on most games. I like the higher frame rates, but I can push anything I want up to 4K. Ultra graphics with RTX on. Now here's the catch. You've got Oculink, which can give you better performance. And I'll show you the difference in performance at the end, right? But some might argue that with an eGPU setup like this, you won't get nearly as much performance than if you were to have it traditionally set up in a normal gaming PC. That is the case. But for me, the way I see it is, I'm already past that certain threshold for me to enjoy any game I wanna to play to where if I go above 120 frames per second, it doesn't really matter that much for me um, because I'm already past the whole can it run it type of situation. You're gonna notice, um, you obviously with an RTX, you have GeForce experience and then with an AMD, you have adrenaline, right? So I've come across this right here where I'll boot into a new game and uh, by default, you know, depending on the game that you play, if I click on this, all of this stuff is turned on, right? Frame gen, anti-lag, chill, sharpening, um, you know, FSR, things like that. So when this is on by default and you jump into a game, you know, NVIDIA wants to do the same thing right? They have their frame gen, their DLSS and all that. So they, they intertwine with each other. Um, and you'll notice a huge amount of latency and a lot of like other things. So all I do is, you know, I just go over to my, um, my performance or sorry, no. So I just go over here to gaming graphics, custom. I turn everything off by default. Um, so that I can let NVIDIA do the work. I trust NVIDIA more than I do this when it comes to a desktop setup. When I want to unplug this and I want to go, you know, on a trip, um, I will actually go back to my HyperRX preset and all my games will revert back to the original setup that they, they had on the handheld. So it's a simple thing, but every time you boot into a game for the first time, you got to make sure this is all turned off. That's not a big deal, but... Okay, so here's the Ally X. We've got Black Myth Wukong at 1440p, and graphics are set to very high on everything. I've got DLSS at two balanced. Everything's on very high. We'll just go ahead and run it. Now keep in mind, like I am not good with this science project stuff. Like 
these benchmarks, man, they will be the death of me because my AD is not good with this. But let me just do my best. Bear with me. On the other games, I'm I'm not that... I'll get the point across, but I won't be like, based off the 1% lows and the high, you know, it's, that's just not me. But anyways, so check it out. Average frame rate, 56 frames. As you can see here, everything's set to high. You can zoom in, look at the details. So you'll have a good idea of what to expect with the USB-C 4.0. Okay, so let's take a look at the finals. This game is so fun, but um, everything's up on very high settings, as high as it goes. And this game takes a lot to run. There's a lot going on. Destruction, physics, freaking you name it. And as we can see here, we're at a steady upper 80s and 90s. Um, which for me is good enough for a first person shooter. And uh, yeah, I mean, this game freaking rips. It's so fun. So here we have Ghost of Tsushima. Everything maxed out as high as it can go. Um, 1440p, RTX, the whole nine yards. Legion Go just connected it for the first time. And here we are at 95 FPS. These frames that we're getting are just so cool. And the game just looks so amazing. Honestly, it is probably one of the prettiest looking games I've played. But yeah, I mean, it is so cool. And it's again, it's simple. Okay, now for the test. Now we're going to unplug the Legion Go from the RTX while it's running on Ghost of Tsushima to see what happens. Low-key, I'm a little scared, but okay, ready? Three, two, one. I'll plug. Ooh, that's what happens. You saw that, right? Now she's rebooting. Oh, we're back to just normal. It did reset. What do you expect? Um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty simple stuff. Now the thing is, is the device always has to be powered off before you plug in. The RTX 4070. If I go ahead and plug in the display right now, and there's no RTX, so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and we'll see what pops up. Let's hope something pops up. Okay, nothing happened. Oh no, there it is. Boom. And we're back in the game. And just like it was. I mean, it works. You can plug it in and plug it out. Plug it in just like it's nothing. So the USB-C 4.0 can do 40 gigs per second. And then the Oculink can do just a tad bit over 60 gigs per second. So there's a lot more data transferring between your RTX and your handheld. So yeah, you're going to notice a lot better performance. The problem is that the handhelds that support Oculink are normally like the Chinese ones that we don't tend to buy because A, they're very expensive and B, you kind of don't know what you're getting into. It's a little risky, some might argue. Um, remember that our average FPS was 56 with the Thunderbolt cable. Now we're looking at 82 frames per second with the same settings. Granted, the GPD-14 has 32 gigs of RAM, minor differences, um, but again, you're seeing a drastic difference in performance. And here's the thing. Some games, there's no difference between USB-C 4 and Thunderbolt or an Oculink. And then some games, there's a major difference. Yo, guys, I've been freaking working on this video for so long. I can't go back up and film an outro. But thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Um, let me know what I could do to improve. And you don't have to sub if you don't want to. But, you know, if it's your vibe, it's your vibe. Okay. Also, yeah, whatever. Peace.